What's up, y'all? You're checking out Living Corporate on YouTube. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell in that corner so you keep up to date with all the dope content we're creating here, driving real talk in the corporate world. You know, it's interesting. Um, I, I start off by saying, you know, we don't have a lot of black HR executives on the show. Uh, and, you know, there's this of course, like there's this stigma uh, and there's also just a belief. And, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I, I'll be honest, I probably hold that belief as well. Even even as I think about my own career, me cutting my own teeth in HR is that mm -hmm. HR really isn't there uh, for employees. And they're really there to serve and mm -hmm. really, uh, really get, mitigate risk for the company. Yeah. Um, and How that, long were you in HR, Zach? Yeah. So let's see here. Um, I started, I graduated in 2011. And I was an HR manager at Target. Then I, mean, I was there for about a, a little under a year. Mm -hmm. And then I was an HR specialist for about two years. And then I was an HR business partner for about a year. Uh -huh. And then I got to change management consulting. So I was like about half my, about the first third of my okay. career. I've been working for like, what, 10, 11 years? Uh -huh. So like like the first like three and a half, four years of my career, I was in uh, I was in HR. Okay. Okay. Uh, um, and so and, and so it's it's interesting because, again, like, there is this narrative, and frankly, like, almost to the point where it's like a stated just reality mm -hmm. of the corporate world that HR is not really there for the employee, and certainly not there for black folks in terms of really advocating for making sure that they actually have an outcome that is equitable or right for them. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm curious, like, how, do, like, what is your perspective on that, and like, what would be your counter to those, that position that? Yeah. You know, if your goal is to make sure that you're taken care of as an employee, that you're looked out for, that you're advocated for, that you're supported, then don't go to HR. Go to your employment lawyer or go to, you know, look for another job. Like, what's the what's what's the counter to that perspective? Yeah, no, Zach. And, and that is very much how a lot of employees feel. Um, and and what I, so I, you're talking to an HR veteran for 30 plus years and and. I'm not gonna lie, I've seen that in my travels of, of this. And, and as as HR departments are whittled, 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 headcount goes down, class structure, everything goes down. The, the model that you have to um, think about is, um, I can't reach every employee, especially if you're with a big company, like Target is a huge, huge company, right? Um, uh, our company is, is is relatively large and and so when you have a, a, a HR department that is you know one HR person for a couple thousand people right two three thousand people mm -hmm. then there's only so much you can do and, and the model that we that that you should try to HR organizations when they're in that sort of um, uh, infrastructure you really focus on the leader and the managers to make sure that in the in the thinking of a shadow of a leader right that they understand um how to create an inclusive environment how to create an empowering environment how to create an environment where people can be productive bring their authentic selves to work a sense of belonging a psychological safety you focus with the on the leader and the managers to be able to do that so they would create that environment for employees that they want to be there that they feel like they have advocates like they feel like that you know their bosses and their managers and their leaders are are, are trying to create that culture that they want to be a part of doesn't always work because we know that um, the, all of the layers of managers that exist in different organizations how you know you just you, you they you know people managers they I call it the hourglass you have the leaders at the top that are saying this is the vision this is what I want you have the employees that are saying this is the culture that I want to see these are the things that I'm providing you this feedback manager how come you're not getting that up and then all of these things are coming at the manager business plans you know if, depending on what part, discipline what part of the organization they're in they're getting just inundated with information and and so they feel like okay well how can I do that and so there, there's there's that the hourglass is at the middle that that manager and it, and it becomes sort of like a bottleneck and so um, when I first got in this job I used to think I used to take it personally and think you know you just don't care about de and I you know you're not getting the messages through you're not doing this you're not doing that you're not trying to build your de and I capabilities 
and I was talking with some other colleagues in other centers of excellence, whether that be in HR, like comp and, and all of that, or other centers of excellence. So for example, in manufacturing, quality and safety. <clears throat> and, and they said, you know, Celeste, it's not, it's not just DE&I. So, so I used to be the head of HR for our manufacturing division. So I'll give you an example. The, the shift supervisors, for example, they have quality coming at them. They have compliance coming at them. They have, they got to get their financials. They got to get the IT systems. They have to make sure they're following the safety protocols. They have to make sure they understand what the production, how many, how many this they got to get out the door. They have to do all of these different things, regulations. They're all coming at them. And then we come at them with, okay, and this is what we want you to do in the people space. And they're like, okay, I'm, I'm overload, right? And so I'm not saying it as an excuse because, hey, you asked to be in the job, you wanted to be a manager, so put on, put on your big boy pants and let's go. But, right. um, but, but, uh, but it's, they're all coming at them. And it, and it didn't really dawn on me until I heard from other colleagues that are in those similar type COE uh, centers of excellence type roles that hey, we have the same problem too. And everybody's trying to get at these managers with information. So then I said, you know, well, how do we get at them in their space, right? So if I am a manager in on the shop floor, what does that environment look like? How do I get to them? Um, if I'm a sales district sales manager and I'm riding with my reps, sales reps in a car, how do I get it? So, so you have to get them the information in their environment.